ebb will do you, but a river, a waterfall. Well, I thirsted in the barren land of sin and shame, caring not my Lord was crucified. I wandered in the desert looking for life, wondering my Jesus. Drinking from the springs of living water, happy now am I, my soul is satisfied. Drinking at the springs of living water, wonderful and bountiful supply. Well, I'm drinking at the springs of living water, happy now am I, my soul is satisfied. Drinking at the springs of living water, merciful and bountiful supply. Well, I'm drinking at the springs of living water. Happy now am I, my soul is satisfied. Drinking at the springs of living water. Amen. I'm drinking. I don't need Budweiser. I don't need Jack Daniels. I don't need... Uh, vodka. I don't need it. I need Jesus. Hallelujah. I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, I've been redeemed, been redeemed from sin and shame, I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Well, it's glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid those burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, I used to carry them around. Dragging me down, but now I give them to the Lord. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, hallelujah. Amen. We laid our burdens down. We don't carry them around. That's why we have victory. It's why we walk in the in the victory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sacrifice 
Let's go to the Lord tonight in prayer. If you have something you want to lift up, then let us know. We'll bring it to the throne tonight. Hallelujah. You know, if you would have been asleep for like 20 years, Maybe in a coma or something and you woke up. You would think you were in Mars. The way this world is going. The things that are being done every day. The decisions that are being made. It's like we're in alternate universes. Common sense has been thrown out. There's no more common sense. Not in the not in the, de- the Democrats had... And, you know, it's not just Democrats either. You got Republicans now that (laughs) are siding with the idiots. And I say that with all sensitivity. (laughs) But we need a revival in this country. We need a revival. We need God to move. We need God to raise up. 
his word, his voice in this land. Amen. And God to raise up some John the Baptist types that will go out and declare the word of God. I got a book called um, America's Too Young to Die. It's by Leonard Ravenhill. And the first chapter is Amos Goes to Washington. <laughs> Amos Goes to Washington. And if God sent prophets out today, like he did in the Old Testament, what, what would they be saying? Well, I think we would hear, number one, is we got to turn back to God. Not only, and, and it's not just the nation, right? It's not just, we, you know, unsaved people. They don't know the Lord yet, so they don't, they can't turn back to him. They've never met him. They ain't be in jail for hate speech. You're right, brother. You're right, for sure. But I've been watching this guy on YouTube. His name is uh, David Lynn. He's a, from Toronto, Canada. He's a, he's a black evangelical Christian uh, evangelist. He does a lot of street ministry. He's been all over the country, crisscrossing different cities. He's out in San Francisco, I think, was the la la latest place he's been. And they go right out on the street. You know, he's got a microphone and a and an amplifier. And he goes on the public streets and he preaches. And he's got about 40 or 50 Christians with signs and they're protesting. They're protesting Satan. They're protesting the devil and hell. And he doesn't mince words. He's not afraid to mix it up with people. He's not afraid to tell them that homosexuality is wrong. It's a sin against God. He's not afraid to get into a lot of the hot potato button issues of the day. I don't agree with everything he does. I don't agree with everything he says. He does things I wouldn't do. He, he, he gets himself into discussions I don't think you need to get into. But that's his way. But I'm not going to criticize him. He's, at least he's doing something for God. And he, they just baptized, I think it was in Orlando, like, like 200 people that got saved they baptized them in the ocean they were in miami you know they new york city they've been all over up and down canada but i do believe that that is the direction the holy spirit is going to move in i think he's going to bypass a lot of churches I think he's going to bypass a lot of the organized church that's dead in, in its ways. And I think he's going to go after people that are hungry and thirsty. And he's going to raise up a remnant of people that are going to follow him. And I think there's a lot of people right now that are feeling that same way that I am. And that we need a revival. We need God to move. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to pray tonight and I want us to pray for this for the United States and even Canada and Europe all over this world we need God to move and only the Holy Spirit can bring the difference and the change Lord God, we just pray for the United States. We pray for this country. We pray for Canada. We pray for, for those like David Lynn that are willing to take a stand. They're not afraid. They're not ashamed of the gospel. They're willing to go into, into the heat of the battle and stir up hell and devils and everything else to bring the gospel of Jesus. And I pray, God, that you'll raise up more evangelists and preachers that will have the heart of Noah the preaching of Noah, the preaching of righteousness, and holiness that we need in this hour. We pray for America to come under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. We pray that our governments and, and, and all the organizations that are corrupt in our country, that they'll fall before the Lord, that they'll repent of their sins as a nation, God, all the way through this nation, those that are lying and cheating and scamming the people. Father, we pray for a mighty revival in this land. 
God, that you would heal our land, that you would bring revival and restoration to the church, to the bride of Christ. Hallelujah. To obey is better than sacrifice. I don't need your money. I want your life. And I hear you say that I'm coming back soon. But you act like I'll never return. Well, you speak of grace and my love so sweet. How you thrive on milk, but reject my meat. And I can't help weeping at how it will be. If you keep on ignoring my words Well, you pray to prosper and succeed But your flesh is something I just can't feel To obey better than sacrifice I want more than Sunday and Wednesday nights cause if you can't come to me every day then don't bother coming at all La 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 To obey is better than sacrifice I want hearts of fire not your prayers of ice and i'm coming quickly to give back to you according to what you have done according to what Keith Green wrote that song. Sounds like a Keith Green song, doesn't it? <laughs> Man, that guy was so full of uh, the jealousy of God. He wanted to see God exalted in the church. He wanted to see Christians awakened to their full potential. But more than ever, those songs and those messages are really really important because it's so easy you know it for any of us really i mean we have to guard our hearts in this hour because the enemy is he's not laying down you know and sleeping believe me he's trying to take out whoever he can and we have to be on our game we have to be full of god at all times we have to be praying seeking the lord the devil wants to destroy the church, our witness, our testimony. He's doing, he's doing his best to try to take out, you know, Christians. 
we had a church here in, in, in this area that was, I think they it started out with one church and then they had four churches in different locations. And the pastor was a household name. I mean, you know, just charismatic guy. You would have thought this guy was the most you know, righteous preacher around, you know, the way he preached and stuff. And then we find out that he was having an affair with somebody in the church. And it's just the church was just dragged through the mud. Luckily, it's still there, it's still existing. He's not there anymore, but the church is still going. But you know what? The enemies are battling against everyone. But thanks be to God, we have the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. me to victory beneath his cleansing blood lord we thank you tonight for the blood of jesus christ that has covered us that has washed us lord we thank you for the blood of jesus that lord we are redeemed by that blood hey wolf welcome back Uh, you didn't miss the whole thing. We're still, we're still praying tonight. This is prayer meeting night. If you got a prayer request, let us know. I've got a niece that had um, years ago when she was little. She had a boating accident. So a, a guy, she was in a boat, and a guy in a wave runner uh, crashed into their boat, and the wave runner landed on her leg and it crushed it. And literally, she was in surgery for hours. She was about, she's um, like 21 now. But this happened when she was about nine years old. Well, the bone didn't heal right, so they had to go in um, last week and break the bone and and reset it. So she's laid up for six weeks, I think. So let's give her a good prayer tonight for her to be healed supernaturally. God can fuse that bone together in an, in an instant if he wanted to. But let's believe God for, heal, for a mighty recovery. Father, we thank you for your marvels and miracles and wonders, things that you do, God, every day. And we ask God tonight for Lauren that you will touch her in her leg that you will fuse that bone together and heal it, that it'll heal right, God, in the name of Jesus, that it'll be perfect. You're the great physician. You're the great healer tonight, Lord. And we just lift her up and pray and believe God for a mighty restoration of her leg, that it'll be fully healed. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Lord, we also lift up Sandy. We thank you for her, Lord, for her faithfulness to you, even though she's been through hell and back. She still believes, God. She still holds on to your unchanging, unwavering hand, God. And we pray for her, Lord, that you will heal her, the muscles and nerves in her neck, Lord, in her lower back, in her, in her legs and shoulders and all her, through her body, God. We pray that you will bring a healing through the supernatural power of God. Lord, a healing in her body, 
that she will feel, Lord God, a release of that pressure and pain. Father, that her body would respond to the divine power of God, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you're a healer, that you're a deliverer tonight. Hallelujah. That you are able, God, that you are able to go in and do what a, a surgeon couldn't even do, a physician, a doctor. You're way beyond that, God. You are the Lord of eternity. You're perfect in all of your ways, God. And we thank you, Jesus, that you're the healer. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, tonight. We praise you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We thank you, Jesus, for your healing power. I lift up my mom tonight. She's been suffering with a hemorrhoid that's been very painful for like five days. But Lord, we believe you've touched her. And that she's beginning to heal in Jesus' name. Let me be right back. Hold on just a second.
All right. Praise God. Well, so we've got a, um, anything you need prayer for Lucia or Caleb before we go tonight? Anything you need prayer for? Let us know what it is and we'll pray for it tonight. I'm doing a a study yeah well that's true and we're human beings even though we're Christians you know and I'm not trying to you know justify anything that we do wrong but we also need to understand that sometimes and I mean it happens to all of us we can only take so much and then we break down. That's just the way humans are, right? But what we need to learn, and this is something that we all need to learn, including myself, and it's very hard to do in the moment. It's <laughs> when you're triggered, it's very hard to not want to lash out at somebody or speak your mind, which it's very, very hard to just bite your tongue and pray. And I have to do this all the time. I do it with family all the time. Because I'll get into a disagreement about something and all of a sudden I'll just feel my anger rising, you know, about something. And I'll just, i say it's better to just shut up and not say anything in that moment and just let it pass and then move on to the, you know, live another day. Because it's not worth it. You know, we, we argue, and I'm not saying you, but I think maybe all of us sometimes we argue over things that they really don't matter <laughs> at the end of the day. You know what I mean? And so I figure that sometimes, you know, that's part of the process of growing as a Christian. I mean, look at the Corinthians, the church that Paul had started. They were full of the spirit. They were being used in the gifts of the spirit. They were speaking in tongues. They, they had all of these manifestations of the Holy Spirit, but they weren't walking in love. They weren't, they were carnal, he said. They were worldly. Now, the reason that they had, the reason for that letter for Paul to be so abrupt and harsh with them is because they needed to grow up. Now, this is something we all need to remember. I mean, we can be full of the spirit one minute and then full of vigor and anger the next. That's the reality. And that's, we have to be honest. And you don't think Jesus understands? Of course he does. Look at his disciples. There you have a case study in anger. James and John wanted to sit next to him at his table. And they argued over that. They argued over everything. I think the uh, movie The Chosen really bears that out. But it's true. It's in the scriptures. We read it. They were in the process, right? They're in the process of being made. We're in the process of being made. But what you say there is a good thing because that's the heart and attitude we should have. Because if we try to cover up our sins, if we try to cover up our failures, they're just going to keep coming back. But if we confess our faults, the Bible says he'll heal us. He'll forgive us. He'll change us. Amen. Let's pray. Father, let us, each one of us tonight, search our own hearts. And Lord, areas where we may not be 
mature yet, where we may not have grown up in the Lord yet, where we we're still battling, Lord, childish emotions when it comes to people. We're still walking, Lord, in 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 our flesh when it comes to dealing with family and friends. The hardest thing, Lord, is to be what you want us to be all the time in the spirit. And we can only be that as we trust you, as we trust you more with our life. But convict us, Lord, convict us where we're wrong, convict us where we need your your grace to heal us and your mercy in Jesus name. We each pray, Father, tonight. We thank you for honesty. We thank you for Lashia's honesty in this area of her life. But Lord, we each one need that in our life to be more like Jesus. Amen. To be more like Jesus. That's what it's really all about is to be more like Jesus and less like ourselves. I was just listening to another Keith Green song. I tell you, he, he wrote some good ones, but he wrote a song called I Want to Be More Like Jesus. And um, the lyrics are, are really good. But I think we all struggle with this in all honesty. We're not there yet you know what i mean we're still walking towards that goal but we haven't you know reached it yet as each day passes by i feel my love run dry I get so weary, worn, and tossed round in the storm. Well, I'm blind to all his needs. I'm tired of planting seeds. I seem to have a wealth of so many thoughts about myself. I want to, I need to be more like Jesus. I want to, I need to be more like him. Those are powerful words, amen? Powerful words. I want to, I need to be more like Jesus. I want to, I need to. Be more like him. I don't even know how it goes. I gotta I gotta play that one out, but that's a good song. Anyway, I'll have to play that sometime. But he says, Our Father's will was done by giving us his son who paid the highest cost to point us to the cross. And when I think of him taking on the whole world's sin. I take one look at me compared to what I'm called to be. I want to be, I need to be more like Jesus. Remember, there's no greater love than to to lay down your life for a friend. The end of all my prayers is to care like my Lord cares. My one and only goal, his image in my soul. Yes, my weakness is revealed when by his stripes I'm healed. He's faithful and he's true to complete the work he begins in you. I want to, I need to be more like Jesus. That's a powerful song, but that's the truth. That's what it's all about. Amen. That's what the whole journey is about, right? I want to. I'm I'm writing another uh, article that I've been doing. I haven't really fully got it all together yet, but I did one video. It's called um it's called The Tale of Two Nations. It's a look at Israel their their failures compared to the United States' 
failures. And it's a very uh, interesting comparison because you had Israel that was God's people. You had Judah that was kind of like, you know, the center of his will. But then you had, you know, this complete meltdown of, of a nation that just was no longer following God. And so he turned them over to the enemy and to their destruction to, so that they would repent. And we have the 70 years of captivity and all of that. But anyway, it's out of Jeremiah, and we're going to be doing that on Thursday nights. It's a really interesting study because it really goes with the time that we're living in. And when you see it, the very things that God says to Israel, he could say to America. But anyway, th this is not uh, that. This is in Ezekiel. But I wanted to share it before we leave. It says, therefore, says the house, therefore say to the house of Israel, United States, in parentheses, you could say. I'm not saying that literally it is. I know there's a difference between Israel and the United States. I get that. But I'm using it as an example. So follow along with that. Thus says the Lord God, I do, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, example, America, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am hollowed in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all the countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you should be clean. Now, that's that doesn't really represent America. That definitely represents Israel. When Israel became a nation in 1948, but this is also a futuristic promise of, for Israel down the road. But here is, a, here is a God saying that, I will cleanse your iniquities. I will enable you to dwell in the cities and ruins that, that shall be rebuilt. And he's talking about revival and restoration. Now, this is the 37th chapter, and I'm not going to preach long on this, but I wanted to share this. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out of the spirit, out in by the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, you know. And he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God of these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. And I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live then you shall know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. A valley of dry bones. Sounds like the Presbyterians. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, sounds like the Catholics or the Lutherans. Or maybe Pentecostals or Baptist or whatever denominational flavor. But you know what? God is going to raise up these bones. Revival and such. And so what, what I want to encourage us with tonight when we're praying in our own prayer closets, and we should be for America, for this nation, because America right now is at a crossroads. Some people think that we've crossed a line that we may not ever come back from, and I don't believe that. Because I believe God is still on the throne. Amen. I believe Jesus is still Lord. And I believe his church is still his church. Even though the church is not always what it should be. It is still his body on the earth. It is still his vessel to bring revival. You don't have revival without the church. Because only the church can be revived. 
Because you can't revive something that's never lived. And somebody that's not been saved, they haven't lived in Christ yet. They need to be born again, period. But revival is for the church. And revival is for God's people. And God's people are needing to be awakened in this hour. We need a revival. We need people to come alive. And it's not just about clapping our hands and making noise. That would help. Like Charles Green used to say, God likes a little action. But it's not just how loud we sing or how emotional we get. It's about our spirit before the Lord coming alive by obedience, by saying, God, I'm going to do what you want me to do. But he's going to shake these bones. Amen. He's going to shake his church. I believe a shaking. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. <laughs> Elvis was right, but he didn't. I don't think he. I don't think. I don't think he knew what that was all about. But shake and bake. God is going to shake this church. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a whole lot of shaking going on. I don't even know how it goes. Something like that. So anyway, that's, that's it. We'll just, just pray for America. Pray for our nation. For God to move. For people to be revived that there will be a hunger for the Lord. I've got a lot of people right now are wanting to leave Facebook because it's gotten really bad. It's they they don't even post anything that you you can post it, but they don't there's no algorithms anymore if you're a Christian. They're not sharing your messages with people on your friends list. It's just it's more or less just become the algorithms and the robots have taken over. <laughs> oh, it's, it's like it's like AI has taken over Facebook to the point where now a computer is telling what to say and what can be said, and it's you know you no longer have a voice there. So we're we're heading into this chat thing at at the right time because there's a lot of people that are looking for a place where they can really share their heart and life with people. I think people are tired of just algorithms and posting in general. I think people want threaded conversation, chat, real-time chat is going to make a comeback in a big way. And I'm glad that we're heading this off. We've been doing it, but I mean, I think it used to be really big before Facebook. That's all there was. His chat rooms, Yahoo, all that. Yee. Back in the day, <laughs> Yahoo. Yahoo, you remember that? Yeah, that was it. And AOL. And then Facebook just took everything over. Now Facebook has killed it, which eventually is what happens with everything. If you get too big, if you become too much of a giant, you end up censoring and, and controlling and then when people are controlled they no longer want to be a part of it and so a lot of people are going to be vacating facebook leaving it behind and i know we're never going to be you know a parlor or anything like that but we can be a source for people that want real-time chat and we should be praying about it and seeking god about it and believe god that we can have something a platform where people could come to and really have meaningful chat you know that's what i'd like to see it doesn't have to be huge site but we have to be able to get new people and start seeing people saved we were starting to see people saved on cosme but then you know it always happens where the enemy comes in and just tries to attack it and so it kind of went down a little bit, but I think it's coming back a little bit. So we'll, we'll see what happens with, with this with this channel here. I think they added something. Um, I seen it yesterday, but I don't see it today. Maybe. Let me see. 
No, that's weird. It was on here yesterday. It was um It was discovery. And when you clicked on it, it opened up all of the different things that you can stream on here. Websites. Maybe it's down here under other. I don't know. But anyway, it was it, it was here and now it's gone. You know what I'm talking about? Well, anyway, I don't see it now. So that's what they do. They add stuff, then they take it down. And <laughs> it's no wonder. We're <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, good to see you guys again. Um, you know, we'll be back Sunday. If um, when I get back next week, I'm going to start doing um, some live streaming um, from Discord. So I might give you guys a link heads up I'll let, might be sending you a link to join on a thursday or maybe friday night on there and eventually i want to sync up some of these sites with youtube live and i want to test that out and see how that works because if we can get on like wire club and different places where we can you know five or six different places we can get more people coming to our live stuff that would be a plus too and it, i found something that if if we can't do it on Discord, we might be able to do it on, it's a program Microsoft put out called, what's it called? I can't remember now, but it's a video broadcasting teaching site for, for teachers and students, but anybody could join it. But it's like a little pod where you have a video chat and you can add all kinds of things to it and, it's real easy to get in. It's just a link. So it's kind of like a Google video conference, but it has way more stuff that you can do. And it'd be great for Bible study because it's set up for that. It's like to do like whiteboards and share files and stuff. It's, but you can share like anything and it's Microsoft. So it's real easy to get in. If you have a Microsoft account and you hit, hit the link, you'll automatically, be be able to log in but that's something you know that we might be able to do for bible studies who knows but we'll, we're, we're going to figure it out i know we have to move in this direction but it's just a taking time because like i said i don't want to throw something out there that isn't going to work <laughs> been there done that <laughs> right been there done that i got the t-shirt All right. Well, anyway, God bless you guys. We'll see you Sunday night. Back here, I guess, Sunday night. Have a good one. Good to see you, Lashia. Hope hope you have a good... Uh, are you off work today? Is that what's going on? All right. Well, have a good day off. See everybody Sunday, hopefully. God bless you.